and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4 kids at 147 And I'm going to kit up my Dreamers Design ginormous. Haven't worked on one that's this wide and this tall for a while. Um, but this is Contemplation from Dreamers Designs, which is absolutely gorgeous. But it is a 80 by 60. So I want to get this one kitted up for doing over the month of November, December. Um, I'm quite liking kitting up a few at the moment because then I can sort of flip between a few. So I can do this one on the dining table, but then when I feel like sitting on the couch, I can do my smaller one. That's the idea. Anyway, it does come in a nice protective bag, which is great. So it's rolled inwards at the moment, though once I've done a bit, of course, I'll be rolling it outwards. But let's move the diamond painting itself out of the way. And then I have a huge bag of diamonds because this one does have 52 colours. Now, I have a, a lot of diamond painting storage um, and different containers for kitting up. But very recently, my daughter's also been using a few, which in turn means that I don't have a case free that does 52. Um, with the ones that I've sort of not de-kitted yet. In fact, I don't even know. Anyway, the 60 bottle case that I have, my daughter's already pinched. My 42 bottle case that I could then potentially put another case with, she's already pinched. So, I decided to order another 60 bottle case because I do like the bottles um, this comes with more stickers, which I'll put with my others, but I do like the bottles. I like the fact that I can take out whatever bottle it is I need and I can put it on the diamond painting while I'm working. And then if I go, you know, make a brew, answer the phone, go to the toilet, whatever, um, I come back and I know what symbol I'm working on. I know what symbol's in my tray. So I got myself another one um, for this painting. I figured we've got two with 60 bottles now, so that will work. So let me get out the diamonds. Oh, oh at least they do come in an order. So they do come connected in order, which is quite nice. So that will be a bit easier than me trying to hunt through and actually find what bags. Um, that's just about the Facebook group, so we'll move that out the way. And it does come with a sheet. I don't think it's actually a sticker sheet. Um, I've tried a few times to see if I can get it to peel, but it does seem to be laminated, so it is quite nice. Now, what I'm wondering... Oh, yes. So, I will be able to get both the symbol and the actual number on the top of my bottles. So I won't be able to get the number one, two, three, etc. but I will be able to get the rest. So I don't think this is gonna work with my trimmer as well. So I'm just gonna cut down the lines. And this is so that I can feed this through my sticker maker and use the symbols that come with it to put it in my diamond painting because I much prefer that way if I can, because then the colours stand out clearer. Oh, this is gonna take me a while to do. 40, 52, sorry, different colours. It's been a while since I've worked on one with that many colours. I'm just cutting down this other edge as well, just to make sure that I've definitely got enough room for it to sit on top of my bottles and then we're going to have to see how well these are going to fit into the tubs. I may end up with some that I have to put into baggies as well but we'll deal with that if that's the case. That is a lot of stickers. I hope you guys are comfy. So I've got my gorgeous sticker maker 
given to me by the lovely Mary James. See if I can get it to go in straight this time. It is a little bit off, but hopefully not enough. Oh, we just made it. Okay, so you can see it's gone a little bit off. I obviously wasn't straight when I did it, but the angle was enough for me to get to the other end of it, which is what I want. So if I can get hold of this, I've recently been losing all my nails this last week. Goes through phases of that. So let's get rid of that. And here we go. We have a nice sheet of stickers. So what I might do is do this in little batches because putting the stickers on can be a little bit boring. It can be fun. But if we do it in rows, so two, four, six, eight, rows of ten, so two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten, which I'm actually going to cut all the way across. So I'm just going to deal with ten at a time. Now, I do like to do my cases with the first number starting at the bottom. That's the way I like to work it. Some people like to start at the top, but it really is completely up to you. It's quite nice that these are, they feel like they've been laminated a little bit. They've got like that glossy feel rather than a paper feel. It's quite nice. Some of my cutting isn't the best, but it's definitely enough to still see the symbol and the DMC number, which is what we need. So let's get these all off and then we'll see how much these bags are able to fit inside one. So I'm just gonna get my tray. So, Thank you. I think it was Pauline. I did reply to a comment um, who suggested using a tray when kitting up. Definitely works. And some people do did say they do actually open all bags and then put them into grip seal bags, which is also an idea that I may do. We'll sort of see how, how many potential duplicate bags we end up with. My little rubbish bin, though I, I think I'm going to be emptying that a bit more than I was last time. Because there's, they're quite big bags, these. I mean, they're definitely bigger bags than you'd need for such a small amount, but there are some of them that are full. So we'll see how... Ooh. See, I'm already making a mess. See how many we can manage to get in. But so far, we are, of course, completely fine in the bottles. I do need to pay attention because the next one, which is the number four, I actually have two bags full. Oh, and I'm making a right mess with how I've got this one. They're looking like nice diamonds at the moment though. They are square. It is a square one I'm doing for this one. But they're looking like nice diamonds. Yeah, so the next colour, which is 304, I actually have two bags for, and neither of them are busting to full. So I'm gonna see what it's like with just the one in and see how full that makes it. Okay, so that is one of these bottles with a little bit of breathing room. I did, I thought I saw one fall out. It did a full on jump. Okay, so we do already have one that's extra. Now, the bag that I had these in is an A4, one of those bags. I do want to use a smaller one. So here is an A5 one. I'm gonna transfer the sticker over because that just reminds me, if I get anything muddled up, it's just my little sticker that tells me 
what the name of the picture is, the size, whether it's square or round, etc. And we'll pop that in there. I'm just propping it up on the back of the case. 310, which I'm happy to see is not full to bursting. 310, very nice. We have got some coming up though that look like they're fuller than that 304 was. So we'll see how much I'm able to get into a tub. When I get to those, I'm making a proper mess with the black. But the tub is saving the day. Because I can just tip them in that way. So that's 310. Nice to know I don't have a lot of those in this painting. Now this is one that's looking quite full. But we'll see how well we go. We've got the tray underneath. So, for example, then, that has got way too full. So I'm just going to tip the top few out as well. So I think I am going to have to get baggies for this one because, of course, I've already opened that bag. I could leave some in the bag and just put a bit of tape over. But I find it easier just to pop them into a, bag, a baggie instead. They're all universal and the same size then. And I'm not fighting with tape when I take them out. So i put the lid on that one, but I'll keep it close. And then in with my sort of stickers, I do have both some circle stickers that are bright pink that I'm not likely to use. And I also have some squarish ones with a little border around the label. I tend to like the plain white ones when I'm kidding something up. So I'll use these up on the extras. So this is 312. Just put the DMC number on because that will be plenty. And I know they're not round diamonds, but for the purpose of this, I'm just using up stickers and they're going with all the other diamonds for this kit. This is another one, 472, that looks quite full. There is quite a bit of static on these. See, that seems too full for me and the diamonds have just gone flying across my desk because of the static. But that's it emptied out. And this one is 472. just using a normal pen for this so I've got no fear of anything smudging and I'm not putting any paper inserts or anything I don't need these baggies to stay upright but yeah we've definitely got some static going on there some of them do not want to move but I'm sure that will calm down when I'm actually working on it the last painting I had that had a bit of a problem with static when I was actually working on the painting it was no problem at all only while I was kitting it up. Okay, next one is quite a bit smaller, so we should be good. Looks like they've got folded over for me as well. Some creases in them. Pale green. We've got some nice ABs in this one, in this painting as well, which will be nice. And then 550, which is our dark purple, another popular colour on diamond paintings, or at least it's one that sticks in my mind, whether it's from diamond painting or from cross stitch, I'm not quite sure. That one is very, very full. In fact, there's a couple caught in the bottom, but I do think they're going to fit they'll fit so it's not worth getting another baggie for those and then 600 where's the next pack is this it here we go 600 it's nice that they all come in order it saves me hunting through baggies or having to sticker them all up straight up and then try and find the right number and I'm making a mess, but I don't mind as much when I'm when I've got a tray underneath. 
The only reason I'm not tipping them into the tray and then tipping them into the pot straight away is just because if I do manage to get them all in without spilling any, I save myself a step. Right, where did I actually put the stickers? There they are. Because we're ready for the next row of 10. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. these all to line up. Not that my cutting's straight, but hopefully the stickers will line up straight. Yeah, it'd be quite nice to work on. I've worked on a, on a couple of big ones recently, but they've been big and thin. Whereas this one is more of a rectangle, so it's, it's definitely longer on both sides. It's not gonna fit on the little table I tend to use in front of the TV, anywhere near the same as they do. And even those struggled sometimes when I got near the end of them. And I'm gonna empty my pot, because I think that's about the right amount of bags for it to handle. And then I can move on to the next batch. So we look to have a few here that are gonna be, well, there's a couple, 666 is a colour, there is a lot of. This bag has had a crease in it, so it's just taking a bit for them to start getting past that crease to get into the pot. This is where I'm more likely to drop some because I'm trying to make the bag move and we do still have a bit of static. But everything's out the bag and at least the trays caught the rest. But aren't there some pretty colours in this? Static or not? There's some pretty colours. We obviously have some nice shading because we've got a few colours in a in a colour family that go, the numbers are quite close together. So normally DMC wise that means you've got a dark shade of one and a, a medium shade and a light shade. So you often get nice shading when you have colours that are close together. It's always nice to see. And then 605, we only have a few. A lovely pink. But for the next one, which is 666, we actually have two bags. So I'm gonna leave one on the top and we'll see if we have got enough for a pot or if there's more than a pot's worth. Because if I have to put some, yeah, I've got more than a pot's worth. So if I have to put some in a grip seal bag, then I may as well put all in a grip seal bag. So that's the pot that's completed. I'll leave it on the top just in case my brain forgets the number. And I'm gonna tip all the rest in as well because otherwise I'll tip the baggie in and forget that I have a small bag or you know I'll go to tip the really big bag in and then it won't have enough room in the pot because what I tend to do is I tend to only go to the spare ones when the pot gets empty I'll then go hunting for the rest whereas at least if they're all in the bag together I can tip however many in to fill the pot and then just pop the rest back in. So we've got 666. I'm not too worried about it getting mixed up and upside down because there isn't a DMC number that's called 999. So we're all good on that front. We've got quite a few big bags coming up as well in these 700s. It wouldn't surprise me if we need to use quite a few baggies for this one but that's to be expected with a painting that big they're not all going to fit in the pots and I'll only have eight pots spare when I'm done so it's not always worth putting the extra colours because we've already got what 
three or four out of these that are extra. Well, that's pretty much half of my spare pots used up already. So I may as well just have them all in a bag and be done with it. Oh, that's a borderline one. Are they going to fit? <gasps> that is as full as you're going to get it. There is no wiggle room in that. But if it saves creating a bag, it saves creating a bag. Okay, these are different colours. So we've got 741. Again, this one seems very full, but it's whether it will fit in a pot or not. I'm going to go with no. Yeah, that's definitely a no. So if it's definitely going to be a no, I'll tip a few out so that it's comfortable. So that I don't make a mess when I'm actually diamond painting. That's the idea anyway. And we'll get the rest in a baggie. And it may be that I never end up going to these baggies. It may be that that is classed as the extra. Quite often companies will give up to 30% extra diamonds just to cope for any spillage or, you know, miscounting or anything like that. So it may be that I never touch those bags and that they stay as permanent spares. But at least if they're numbered up, I can deal with them when it comes to de-kitting. Whenever I find the end of this painting, which may take me a while. Okay, that's 742. Then we're on 743. Is that that one? Oh, so on the next string, we actually have another bag of 742, but we didn't have to go over that bag, so I'm just going to put that one in. And then the next one is 743, which does look rather full. I think I'm going to need an extra bag for this one. Let's see how we go. Yeah, for definite. Right. Yeah, definite, definite. There's no way that was going to fit in the pot. But I have lots of baggies because I actually put some special diamonds away and sorted out some DMC numbers the other week. So I freed myself up some baggies for reuse, which is always good. A little bit of static, not too much. But they can rest in that bag because I have no dryer sheets left to pop in the bag with them. So they can just sit there and settle for a little bit. Seven, four, three. And then the last one of this strip, we've got 781. We should be good for this one. And make sure that strip lies flat so I don't have to hunt for it again. I've actually got a diamond balancing on the edge of this part where it's just fell down. I had a square diamond sitting on the rim of the pot, just, just to this side of the bag. I was hoping it would stay there long enough for me to show you, but it didn't. Oh well, maybe next time. Okay, so the next strip of 10, not quite halfway there, but we're getting there. What sort of time frame am I on? Okay, it is going to save in a minute. My memory card is going to save. So let's see if we can get these caught. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's hit save and I'll come straight back. I actually beat the camera. Did I count 10 though? Yeah, I did. I thought then I'd managed to get to nine because I was too busy trying to save the camera rather than it telling me when it was going to save. But I did count 10. We're all good. If not, they need cutting anyway, so what's the problem? This is a proper lot of diamonds. It's going to be a big painting when it's done, but I think it is going to look gorgeous. And I'm hoping that the quality is as nice as I'm expecting. 
because if it is, it might be a site I revisit and have a look at some others. Okay, empty my rubbish. I do have a bag behind me for some unboxing videos that I did, so it's very easy to empty out. But it's not something that I'll, I want sat on my desk while I'm working on this. It's much easier to have that little pot. Okay, so we're now on 783. So we've got quite a few nice burnt orange type colours in this one. And again, this is shading because we've got 781 as well, which is always nice. I did have one jump out of the tray though. And then 803, this again is a very, very full bag. I think we're going to be popping some of these into a, a baggie as well. But yeah, when working with the smaller bags, I do actually like the idea of opening all bags and putting them into baggies because I do that for de-kitting anyway. So I may as well make life easier for myself. Well, I say easier, but do all the cutting and get rid of all the rubbish when I'm kitting it up. Having said that, I've not done it with, with these ones. So I mm, suppose it's because they're only one bag. It's only one bag I've got to deal with to open up when I'm de-kitting rather than 10 or 11. A little bits of trashy drills to get out of my tray. Okay, 813. Oh, that's a nice blue. That is a pretty blue. So we can get them all in. Oh, yeah, I've got a stray one. Does look like we've got a dark colour in there somewhere. Symbols look pretty clear on this as well. I'm not sure what they'll be like when actually working on the canvas but I'll be sure to let you know when I get it finished and do a review. It, it's more so if there's a symbol that is bad to look at I tend to point those out but the symbols look very clear. So there is a few bitty bits Quite a few bitty bits floating around on my desk from these. But that doesn't mean the drills are horrible. I say they look nice, but you can never really, really tell until you start working on them how nice the drills are. So I'll have to wait and see. I get those straightened up. And all the time, putting them up, putting the stickers on straight, and then I have to put them back in one key. Okay, we've got some eight, two, three, so that's another nice sort of a bit lighter than nine three nine, but still a navy. Pushing fitting in the bag there, but oh, there's still some stuck in there. hard to tell because they've got a navy in their design so it was hard to tell because all the bags have got their design on the front. I thought one jumped but it didn't. Get rid of all the bitty bits out my tray. Okay 827. Another nice blue, a bit more of a smoky blue I'd say this one. Dusty blue, is that the colour? See if they're going to fit. Are going to fit? So I hope somebody else watching is getting to kit up a video as well. Or maybe you're working on your diamond painting so that you can kit up your next video. I do enjoy kitting up though. Okay, 890. What one of bags is next? Is it this one? It is this one. So this one, 890, this one has two as well. So that is something that I need to pay attention to as I'm going through. Now, these are filled quite a bit smaller, but it must be that they wouldn't fit into one bag. So they've just spread it evenly into two. But I quite like that because this actually means 
for this one they all fit in one and I've just put the other bag in the spares if it's too much and it's going into a baggie then I'll put them all in a baggie so at least I'm only looking for one thing 902 we only have the one it's only smalls these greens that are coming up, which you can imagine with the picture, but the greens that are coming up, there's quite a few of those. Got some stuck in the corner. And we're done. 904. So 904, we have two bags. 905, we have two bags as well. So let's see if one bag fits in one pot or if we're going out no easy fits in one pot and they do tend to be the same weight in each bag or it looks like there is so if one bag will fit in the pot complete then the second bag will as well once I've used up this first one so we'll throw that in the spares and then we need some more now we're more than halfway. Two, three, still can't cut straight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We actually have three ABs in this one as well, which it's nice to work with some ABs every now and then. I've just done a, I have completed the diamond dots cushion of the dragonfly that does have AB in it. And it was actually an AB that I could pick up with the normal wax in my pen. Didn't give me any problems at all. I must say diamond dots are expensive, but the diamonds, the amount of facets on that diamond is gorgeous. And I will show everybody slash discuss that more when I do the unbox, not the unboxing, the completed video for the cushion. That will be coming next week. So if you are interested in the quality of diamond dots, keep an eye out for that. Okay, 905, we also have two bags. And if you see, when I sort of push them down to one side, they're both pretty much the same amount in each bag. In fact, can I get them to go that way? There we go. So if I actually match up the seams, there is pretty much the same in each bag. So if one bag fits into my pot, then the other bag will fit into my pot and not give me any problems. If the one bag doesn't, then I'll need to put them both into a grip seal bag to not cause me any problems and these are fitting fine it's only so far been that number 666 so it's not to me especially because it is only one bag that I have to snip open and I have a pair of scissors in my little cart that I put all my little like tools in it basically keeps them all corralled um, because I do keep some scissors in there, it's not worth using a baggie and wasting a sticker. I'll just cut open the bag when I need to. This one looks like it might be too full though. Yes, it is. It's getting too close and there's too many diamonds still left in it. So we'll tip those into the tray and get ourselves another baggie. But yeah, 904, 905 and 906, which means there's going to be some nice shading in this green, I think. We do have, oh, which one was easier to open? There's one diamond sat in the bottom of that tray there. I'm going to go for the pots, easier to open than faffing about with the zip seal bag. 906. Done. And then we also have 909, which 
is a lot darker. We haven't even hit the 3000s yet, people. We're still on the 900s. So some paintings seem to favour the 3000s more than others. Okay, this bag's been a pain. So I'm going to put it over the tray and just shake the light out of the thing. Get all the diamonds out and get the tray to do the work for me. 909 and then we've got 911 which is another green. So I really do think we're going to have some nice colour choices in this. There we go. 9.11 and 9.12. So where is 9.12? Here's the next strip. Not quite at the ABs yet, but we're getting there. Oh, this is going to be a borderline one. Let's see if we can squeeze it all into a pot. Yes. Not as close as the oranges. 714 but it was getting there. Got some 915. Did we have 310 in this? Oh yeah we did but it was only a little bit wasn't it? I do like it when that happens. It's nice to get away from 310 every now and then. This one is another one that's borderline but I think we're going to get them all in. Just one that tried to escape. A little bit of wiggle room. 919. Oh, yes, we'll get this one in. A few more coming up though that I don't think we will. The full bags definitely aren't fitting into one pot. Even half full. So there is a lot of colours in this. 934. This one will be a borderline one. It's more, more than half. The bag is more than half full. So let's see how close we get. Oh, we're pushing it, but we might make it. And if you're uncomfortable with having your tubs or your bottles this full, you can always get to whatever your limit is and then stop it I say this one is very close and there's a couple that are being a bit jumpy but I don't think it is enough to create another bag for and it's got more work or room than the oranges and um, whereas 939 the bag is is full so we're definitely going to end up putting some of these into a bag. I can see it happening. Far too many. So I'm actually going to take a few off the top. Just to save them if I only need a few. Um, when I'm actually doing the diamond painting, if you're tipping out of a full tub, it's very hard to tip just a few. You end up with loads of them. See, there is a little bit of rubbishy and trashy bits in these, but I'm hoping the diamonds are still good quality regardless of that. Okay, 939. I'm done. And then 946, I reckon this is going to be the same as 939. I think that is too full a bag to all fit in. They all seem to have about the same amount of air in, so it makes it easy enough to tell. But I don't think I've cut the hole in this one as big, so it's taking its sweet time. A little bit more jiggly in, in fact. Let's just cut the hole a bit bigger while I'm going into the tray anyway. There we go, that was quicker. What do I want? 946 this one is. 
sorry, I don't know if I've just said a completely different colour. But this is another very vivid orange, but more of an orangey red. Yeah, when you hold it up to the orange, it's a bit more ready. Let's put the lid on that before I knock it over. Don't fancy doing that. Nine, four, six. And that is 40 bottles done. We have quite a few in our spare bag at the moment, but we definitely don't need the A4 bag. A5 bag is working a fine. So we'll get the rest of these cut now because I say this painting is 52. Seems a little bit pointless to leave two stickers on the sheet. So we may as well just cut them all for this one. And then we've got the ABs at the end. It'd be nice to see how scattered the ABs are when I do it. Some companies, most companies actually that do ABs are pretty good at scattering them about. It'll be nice to see how this company fares with that and whether you do end up with a nice selection of them. So much easier if I stick the label to my finger and then get hold of it in the right position. Though on a, on a circle bottle, you can do them as straight or as wonky as you like really, because you can just turn the bottle around to make them straighter. But it makes me feel happy when they all look straight in the first instance. Now, I think I'm actually, I've stopped there and I've left that one. I'm actually going to put these three across the back. And the reason for that is they are the three ABs. And I think it will be quite nice when I'm looking at the symbols to know which are going to be the ABs. Because quite often when I'm doing a painting with ABs in it, I like to leave the ABs to the end of the section and add the sparkle at the end. I don't know if anybody else does that. So on this butterfly, sorry, not butterfly, dragonfly cushion that I've just done from Diamond Dots, I only had one colour of AB, but it did have AB in the wings. So I sort of worked on it by doing um, one wing at a time when I did all the other colours and then did the AB in the wing. I just think it can sometimes, yeah, it's just that extra little bit of sparkle that sometimes is nice to do at the end. Give it a little bit of pizzazz. So if I know that the symbols for ABs are across that back row, I know to do them last in whatever section I'm working on. Okay, 955. Now we have two bags of this as well. And they both look to be as full as each other. So we'll go with one and see how much, see if it will all fit in a pot. Okay. One of these is a bit like 666, it's close, but it's not all going to fit. So for this one, I'll do this, and then because it's going into the tray, I can actually cut all the way across the top. In fact, that could even potentially be easier when dealing with these. Mm. Maybe I'll try that on the next few. So if you do tend to use the tray anyway, and prefer using the tray, then it is easier to just cut all the way across the top. The only thing is I find when you're then trying to get them out the spout of the tray and you're having to bash it, that takes longer. And there's still one that got away. I've nearly used all my pink stickers. So 955, now this pen doesn't smudge as much as my other one, but it does smudge if I rub my finger on it. A couple of the numbers did before. 
Oh, we've got an escapee. Uh, that's why I'm putting the sticker on before I write the colour. So yeah, if you prefer to just tip in the tray, then it's definitely worth cutting the top of the, the packet of the diamonds off as a straight strip. But I think it would potentially take longer to tip them from the tray to the bottle than it does to work with just cutting the corner off. But it is a bit of tip for tap. Okay, last strip. And this seems to have, has that got something inside it? Let's tip this one out into the tray and see what it's like. Yeah, this one seems to have, you can probably see it better in the packet. You see those little yellow dots? It has like some trashy bits. Now the only thing is, if I do it, tip the whole packet in and then tip the tray, if any decide to jump out the tray, I've got nothing to catch them. And this is taking a bit longer to make them all. Because I'm using because I'm trying to get so many to come out of the tray. This is where I like um, the tray I use when I diamond paint from Wilson 3D Designs because you can just bash them all to the bottom and this top part is covered so they can't they can only come out the spout. <laughs> they can't jump off. Yeah, and there's still some of that sort of yellow stuff that's gone through into the bottle. See what that's like when we're working with it. Okay. Nine six six. Sorry, nine nine six, not nine six six. And this has got some crappy stuff in it. And oh, I don't quite know what that is. Somebody eating their lunch while getting their diamonds ready. Oh, that's a rogue diamond, but yeah, there's some bitty bits in that as well. And this one. You see those yellow flakes? I'm not even sure if you can see them. Let's see if I can. I think you could definitely see them on the other one. I'm not sure if they're as apparent in there. It's hard to tell if the camera's actually picking it up, but there's definitely something lying in these packets. And it ain't a diamond. I don't quite know what it is. Anyway, as long as it doesn't affect my diamond painting, I'm fine. But I can't tell until I'm doing the diamond painting. So I'll have to see. One, I didn't want to go in. Two more normal colours and then we get to the exciting ones. Memory card beat me there. And I can't even remember what I was saying. If anything, I probably wasn't saying anything. Oh, I was on about the nearly at the APs. Yeah, that weird coating is in this whole stretch of stuff. Maybe it's got something to do with the ABs that have gone in. I don't know. As long as it doesn't affect the painting when I'm doing it, all will be good. Okay. And then last but not least for the normal colours, we have a purple, which will easily fit in. And then the ABs, it actually looks as though protect oh, made a mess with these. Let's just make a mess completely and get them all in the tray. Um, the ABs, we might not fit them all in the pots. That'll be quite interesting because it will mean there's a lot of AB on it. Right, just cleaning out the rubbish from my tray. Let's empty this. And let's do some sparkles. So, for the sparkles, Let's put them fully into the tray and I can show you the colours for them. 
very nice. So that's the first AB, it's like a lemony yellow. You can see the iridescent on, of course, the diamonds that are the right way around. I don't tend to fill my tray up this, this much when I'm shaking it, but you can definitely see the ones that have lined up. Very sparkly. Okay, let's see how many we're actually gonna get fit in here. And if it's too many, this could be where, see look, I'm already dropping them out the tray. Oh, making a mess. I'm trying to shake them gently, but the in fact they're getting stuck in that funnel. I've got to back up. Okay, let's try that again. This is what I cut in the corner of them, it's probably easier. So these are definitely struggling to get out of this tray. I don't know if the tray I currently use has a wider angle. I always used to use these trays though and I never had a problem. But I did always have less diamonds in them so it could be that as well. Could just be the sheer volume of diamonds that I've put in the tray. But yeah, I think we need to put these into a separate bag. So I'm going to end up labelling them with the code that they use. I'm not sure if all companies that, I say all companies, all the sort of non-Chinese non companies that use ABs, because there are some on AliExpress that use ABs. Um, for all the companies that don't, I do wonder if they all use the same numbering system. But this one is AB37. I guess we'll find out when I de-kit this because I do have some Diamond R ABs. So it'll be interesting to see if they use the same numbers. In fact, I can have a look. Is this one white? It's very similar to a white, isn't it? Let me have a look. So, going white. I've got ABs in here. Okay, so I've got what's classed as 141 AB, and these are classed as AB08. And they look exactly the same to me. So, it doesn't look like they use the same number in the system. Oh, well. I don't have that many ABs to worry about. Um, I was going to tip these all out in the tray so that you could see them, but that didn't work so well for me last time. So I will have to tip some in the tray to put in a baggie. So I'll just show you a few of them rather than all of them. We have a rogue green one in here as well, but look, that's the AB08, which is like a white or an off-white with an AB coating. Still pretty. So each company, I'm guessing, must use their own. And I'm not noticing that residue in these. So maybe, because I think the bags sort of get filled up a bit and then I'm guessing they get heat sealed and then the next set of diamonds go in. Unless it's actually one of these diamond colours, maybe the yellow, because it was goldy looking. Maybe the yellow left some residue in the bag on its way down to its, on the way down to its slot. And then the other colours have gone in after. Maybe that was what it was. Okay, last one. This one is a gorgeous lime green, limey green. I'm trying to see if it's sort of sat in the colours around there, but I don't know that it does. This one I think is going to be yeah, too many again for the pot, so that's quite nice. The ABs all overflow the pot, which means there should be some good coverage. But that's this AB, look at that. Gorgeous, limey green with extra sparkle. Can't beat a bit of sparkle. Diamonds, 
behave yourself while you get in the bag, please. You're the last colour. Don't give me too much aggro. Or maybe it was the green that shed all this yellow stuff because there's yellow bits on the bottom of this tray. Anyway. Verdict will return when I've done the painting. So that one is classed as AB38. Okay, so those stickers are done and dusted with. We'll bob those away. That tray needs a clean. Bags are done with. So that is all my diamonds kitted up. Quite an amount of diamonds for that one. My battery's flashing as well because I've been filming for that long. We've got quite a few spares, but they do fit nicely in that Ziploc bag. And that will fit in there, which means if this falls down when I'm working on it, if they're going to fall out, they're all falling out in one pouch, but it actually stops them falling out. So, kind of like that. so let me change the battery in my camera and I'm going to prep the canvas. Okay, so I've straightened a few bits away, but before I just move this out of the way, I did want to let you know that the amount of diamonds that I have got extra in this one, um, even though there's quite a few bags, it will still zip shut if I need it to, um, which is quite nice than using, say, a smaller bag that won't. So I can actually get all that zipped up so that it's away until I'm ready to work on this painting. Now, this is quite a big painting and I'm not sure which way round I'm going to work on it. I know I will probably end up turning it upside down and to the side and stuff. But I do tend to work in the way in the shortest side, so the way it's rolled up. I'm actually having a look. Some of these symbols at the bottom here by this grass are really, really light. I hope that's not a nine and a six. So I've got a six. No, okay, it's not. It is only a six. But we've got a six colour with a white symbol over the top and that is extremely pale. Let me see how far I can zoom you in. Now, it's hard because it has got a protective cover over the top. Let me pull that up. But these symbols down here, so especially around here, I've got sort of an arrow painting that way, which is this symbol, which is quite easy to see. But then next to it, I've got a number six, which is really should have been done in a black, not a white. It's not dark enough to need a white symbol. Um, that is the only symbol I think I could potentially struggle with. And I'm hoping there's not anything that is green and similar. I don't think there is. There's only the two, let's have a look all the way up. No, there is only the two green symbols with white over the top. Oh no, there's a third one. What's this one? Two dots, that's 890. That's quite easy to see though. So these two are really hard, but they're not similar to each other. That's the only thing at the moment that I could see that could be a struggle. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. I still think it should have been a black symbol. It's clear as day on the symbol sheet. It's just not when it goes on the actual canvas. So anyway, to pick what side I'm gonna work on. So quite often, or more often than not, even on a big painting, I will work on from one of the shorter edges. Partly because the painting sort of likes to roll up a bit. So I'm not gonna make the painting roll this way if I need to have space on the table. I'll let it roll the way it wants to. Um, and I'll work from the side and then I'll work my way over. Whether it becomes the top of the painting or the bottom varies. More often than not, I start at the bottom unless it's really small. Now, looking at this painting, there is activity going on all over it. So there is activity on this tree as much as there is on this tree. 
The only difference is there's a bit more activity here around the bench, whereas this is a bit plainer. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on this side of the painting because you get excited when you start a painting. And I like to have, oops, try and stop the noise moving it. I like to have a bit of excitement at the end of the painting as well. So if the picture is more activity or more of a key feature or something, I will always try and save that to the end so I can save the excitement. In, in one sort of way. Now this top paper is really nice quality, this top clear paper. However, it's not the quality of the top paper that makes me change it out when I'm working on a clear cover background. It's the fact that I start chasing diamonds. So I'm working on a particular symbol and I'll see another one. So I'd be like, oh, just do that one, just do that. And before you know it, I've got one colour that's scooting all the way over the painting and there's no order to it. So what I like to do on paintings that are this big is I use my cover sheets, but I only use a couple of rows at a time because it's not, you can't fold as easy with these cover sheets on. So it's not worth putting them onto the whole painting and using loads. I use two rows worth. And the reason for that is because two rows is enough to stop my eyes wandering, even once I've taken one row off. So the next row is enough to stop me going, just that one, just that one. I don't look past that row. But then what I can also do is use the sheet that I've taken off to just do that section and move it over to the next one. I've got quite a few sections on this one, but it does fit in pretty nicely. We've got a little bit of over, a little bit of overlap on each one, a little bit of overhang at the top, but that's all good. So I'll do two like this. Get to the end. I don't think there's much else that I'm going to need to do with this painting, but. This this one I've put on, I've not overlapped it quite as much and it's a little bit skewy. It's not the neatest edge, but I neaten it up when I'm working on it, so I neaten up the two that are around it. I've got enough room to have that little bit more overhang on one. So that is sort of how I lay it out. I'll then pull the clear cover back over, but I'll chop it off. It'll still overlap a little bit, but not too much. So I'll just chop it off enough to get it out of the way and not mess with it. But not that close that there's a fear that I have left some areas unexposed or exposed. Unexposed, exposed, exposed. Um, so I'll peel off this first corner when I first start. I'll then have a look and I may need to straighten up some the pieces around it just so that they do line up exactly across the diamonds so that I can reach each piece, each square that I'm intending on doing. So I'll line it up like that so my edges are really nice and neat and I've got a block to work on. My eyes don't tend to wander over here because they hit white all the way around, which means I'll concentrate on the section that I've unpinned. Whether that be one section or two sections will depend on my evening. Once this section has been finished and I no longer need this cover sheet, I will peel it up and I will pop it there ready. And I'll do that and as soon as I've finished a full row, I'll of course have a full row of cover sheets here, which means I'll then trim down the clear cover again, which leaves it free to work on there. Because of course at the minute it's overhanging onto the next square. That's how I like to work on big ones. On the likes of 30 by 40s, maybe even a 40 by 50, it's worth just covering the whole lot. 
because there's not that much in it but for big ones this is definitely better i can roll all this up i can still roll part of this up but it doesn't roll quite as easy with a cover sheet on does that make sense hopefully it does but yeah if you like to chase colors around your painting by all means leave the clear cover on i'm not against it but I know what I'm like. I like to have nice blocks of it done. Anyway, so that's my paint, my canvas prepped. I've got my painting prepped. The toolkit that came with it is gorgeous, but it's not one that I'm likely to use. So I do have some squishies. We have some nice white pens and some nice little white trays. But I've got a bit posh with my pens and my trays now, so... I'm going to use one of those. Um, I'm not sure which yet. I think I may use this one, uh, which was a recent unboxing from Marble Makes. Um, I like the thickness of it, and I really want to give it a good test out, so I think that's gonna be my pen of choice for this diamond painting. So I'm gonna pop that with my toolkit. In fact, I might just pop it in with the diamonds because I'm kitting up a few and I'm going to move about between each one. So I've popped that in my little case there and then it will make it into my little tray that I have by the side of me. Um, but yeah, that's another painting kitted up and ready to roll. So keep an eye out for, of course, it will be... I'm not going to get this done before the advent calendar starts. I can tell you that right now. Uh, I can guarantee that I ain't got the time for that to happen. But I'm going to pop it in here. It is something that is now prepped for me for over the festive season. And you'll be able to see what it looks like come end of December, January, depending on if I do get it finished over the Christmas season. But I'll definitely show you when it's done so thank you for joining me for this very long preparation video but that's another painting prepared for the holiday season and um, thank you so much for watching and i'll speak to you all again soon mm -hmm.